Welcome back to Lucky Paradox. Okay, it is the evening of June 15th. It's Monday, and tonight we're going to go speak with our friend Charlotte. So, Charlotte's upstairs here. Are you going back, or will you stay? I don't know yet. That's disappointing. I want to stay here. But what's going to happen next? Maybe my parents will come looking for me. I'll always be thinking about what might happen tomorrow. I couldn't live in peace. That distraction is going to affect my cooking. I don't want to do a bad job at the restaurant. You're giving it too much thought. Well, my... Whatever. It could turn into a nightmare. You mustn't doubt your choices. Once you make it, there'll be no turning back. That's easy to say, but I know myself very well. I will be filled with uncertainty and regret all the time. Do something drastic. I don't understand. It's got to be an action of no return. That once you do it, you can't go back. That's difficult. You must choose. Do you want to be a chef or enter the family business? I want to be a chef. Now do an action that won't let you stray from that path. Like what? Uh, you could send a letter to your parents explaining the situation. If it must be something drastic, I don't think that's enough. My conscience will keep bothering me day and night. And if I send a letter, they could easily find me. Well, I've run out of ideas. But if you need help, just tell me. If I think about it objectively, I could... You got something? No. It would be too much. I couldn't. Just the thought of it makes me feel strange. Now I'm intrigued. I don't dare to say it. Quah! Just say it. No. Come on. Would you have sex with me? Ooh la la. It would break the rule of virgin marriage. You say that because I'm the worst alternative, don't you? No. It's because I trust in you. You said you were available if I wanted to try anything from my erotic books. Arrow books? I suffer from amnesia. Don't be a clown. If you don't want it, I'll understand. Are you crazy? Of course I want to. Seriously? I didn't think you were serious. I wouldn't say no to something like that. Are you gonna take your clothes off or not? No. Then how? I'm just going to take off my underwear. And make it quick. I knew you were a horny French girl. Look, you call me a horny French girl again and that's it. Sorry. I'm going to get ready. I don't want to do dirty things in my chef's uniform. Don't look at my ass. Just make it quick. Okay, well, there she is, all bent over and ready. And, uh, wow, how aggressive. Here I go. Uh, yeah, she's, yeah, she's got things going on, and... Just shut up and do it. Okay, well, then we're doing it. So, ah, you did stuff, and uh, you said make it quick. And Rook's got uh, comments about um, the whole situation. 
you know, like temperature and stuff. So we're going to just continue on because I can't show you all the, the, the stuff to you guys. And um, yeah, but uh, Charlotte, do you like this? We. Oui. I need to tell you something. We. Oui? You got a nice ass. Uh, yeah, she, she'd like that, I guess. And uh, so we've got options to do things to her. And so we're just going to proceed through because I, I'm sorry I can't share this stuff with you. But it is YouTube after all. And yeah, we get different um, views and um, choices. So, and there's Charlotte's reaction. Great. <laughs> okay, so I guess now she can't go home again. It feels warm down there. No. Did you do this inside me? Yes. Okay, well, can't show you any of that stuff. Rook! I could get pregnant. This is bad. I'm going to the bathroom. You should have warned me. I think it was pretty obvious. I hope nothing bad happens. Uh, yeah, so Charlotte gets dressed quickly and runs to the bathroom. And you go back to your room to avoid retaliation. <laughs> yeah, and there's Yui is back in our room. So, uh, wow, we did the stuff with her. And, well, we might as well go ahead and see what Yui's up to. <laughs> since, uh, okay. Rick? Uh, well, we could practice our subtlety with her. We could have sex with her. Um, let's see about a chat, though. And we chat with her for a little while. And that's it. And apparently we just went to bed. At, oh, there's Prim. Rick? Uh, wake up. Prim? What time is it? Late. The power went out. Can I stay with you for a while? No problem. Thanks. When my brother left and you weren't here yet, I had a terrible night. There was no electricity and I was all alone. I don't think I've ever been so scared. What's wrong, Prim? You've been acting strange for days. I think I owe you an explanation. I... You don't know how hard it is to tell you this. My brother... I was... I can't. Come on, Prim. <laughs> what happened with Anton? He was sick. He was trying to hide it. But I'm observant. Things fell out of his hands. Or he was trembling. He said it was because of overwork. I played along with him, even though I knew it wasn't true. Are you sure? Yes. I don't know about the details. You know how he is. But if he didn't tell me anything, it's because it must be something serious. That explains the letter he left me at the hospital. I didn't want to worry you. Maybe it was worse that way. He told me he was going on a trip and that he had a surprise for me. I guess that you were the surprise. But the days kept going by. I'm afraid the worst will happen. Please, don't be mad at me. I should have told you earlier. He probably knew that and didn't want to be a burden. But over time, I saw him getting worse. He wasn't even able to stand on stage and do his comedy routines. Prim. I know you came back here to talk to my brother and move on, but I was here in the middle. I know deep down that I mean nothing to you, that you don't care about me, and now you must hate me because my brother might never return. Little Prim, of course I care for you. You don't know how angry I was, but when I walked in here and saw you after all this time, your smile was enough to make me feel better. It's one of the few things that brings me peace. Really? I don't know how you do that. What thing? Smile in spite of everything. 
to endure all that alone. It's the one thing I'll never lose. No matter what happens, or how sad I might feel, it doesn't matter if you leave and my brother never comes back, I'm going to smile. Even if I was alone, I still have this old restaurant. There are so many good memories here. Sometimes I can hear my mother's laughter or try the delicious cakes that dad used to make. It's as if their souls are still here. But also, before you arrived, I cried a lot. I was afraid because deep down in my heart, when I said goodbye to my brother, something told me that it would be the last time I'd ever see him again. Maybe you're being too pessimistic. It's going to be all right. Let me wipe those tears away. That's better. You just needed to vent a little bit. Aren't you angry that I didn't tell you the truth earlier? Of course not. But it's not good for you to keep painful things either. We can handle all that together. Rook, your eyes are wet. I let myself get carried away. I don't like to see you sad. Thanks. Why? For listening. It helps me to have hope. Maybe in the future everything will be better. I've got an idea. How do you feel about going on a picnic? I'd love to. We have a deal then. Aye, Captain. Now, we must get some sleep. You can stay here if you want. Thank you. Prim curls up beside you and embraces you tenderly. She falls asleep after a few minutes. You caress her hair while you think about what just happened in silence. And we've got a new interaction with Prim to go on a picnic at evening. Well, fantastic. And it is the morning of day 37. We got a one point charisma increase. And we're going to start the day by working in the restaurant. But for now, thank you so much, everyone, for joining. I hope you've enjoyed it. And we'll talk with all of you again very, very soon.